Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel MBA Shala. Today in this video, I am going to explain you capital budgeting techniques. Capital budgeting, it refers to the planning of uh, available capital for, for the purpose of maximizing the long-term profitability of firm and deploying this capital on uh, uh, investment proposals. So these investment proposals are to be evaluated. And the financial manager of a company, he has, he will take three important decisions, investment, financing, and dividend. In dividend decisions, investment decisions are basically are of two types, long term and short term. See, long term investment proposals, we will evaluate using capital budgeting techniques. And what are these long term proposals? For example, a company is taking up uh, a proposal to launch a new product for example to launch this new product it has to arrange for various fixed assets like, like for example purchasing of a machinery so company will purchase machinery now that is at time t equal to zero and using this machinery company will manufacture various products which by selling in future it will generate revenue that means now we are investing money but generate we will generate revenue in future as future is highly uncertain in nature we have to evaluate these long-term investment proposals to evaluate these long-term investment proposals we make use of capital budgeting techniques and you are investing your money now which is irreversible once you invest your money you cannot take your step back hence they are irreversible and they are long term in nature that means at the end of year one you will generate some revenue year two you will generate some revenue like that up to the life of asset or till its expiry you will generate revenue but how much you will generate revenue that you have to ascertain using you have to estimate that and as they are long term in nature and high risk is uncertainty is associated with these proposals project proposals investment proposals we have to evaluate them using capital budgeting techniques basically these capital budgeting techniques are classified into two traditional techniques discounted cash flow techniques under traditional techniques we have two methods payback period method and average rate of return method under discounted cash flow techniques we have net present value method internal rate of return method and profitability index method so in shortcut we call this as pbp method ARR, NPV, IRR and PI. These traditional techniques are also called as non-discounted cash flow techniques. And these mod discounted cash flow techniques are also called as modern techniques. Now in this video, I will explain you what is this payback period method and how to calculate this payback period method payback period method so what do you mean by payback period i will explain you with the help of a small example for example a company is considering purchase of machinery its cost is say 50000 rupees and this is going to generate cash flows at the end of year one say 20,000 at the end of second year let us take 25,000 25,000 and at the end of third year again 25,000 rupees respectively which means that the life of this machinery is say three years throughout the life of this asset the, that means first, second, three, three, third years, 
it is giving you generating you 25000 rupees each cash flows at the end of every year and according to payback period method what is this payback period it means the total time taken by this missionary or the investment proposal to repay you your original cost of investment like in this case we are investing 50000 rupees therefore we, we can calculate this like this cash flows 25000 rupees 25000 rupees and 25000 rupees in rupees for this we have to calculate cumulative cash flows cumulative cash flows means keep on adding these cash flows year after year so by the end of first year we got 25000 by the end of second year 50000 amount is realized and by the end of third year 75000 rupees and according to this question we have invested 50000 rupees on this machinery so by the end of second year our amount is realized back therefore payback period for this question for this project proposal is two years which means that this project is taking two years to return you back your original investment and the same you can also calculate using this formula whereas payback period method is equal to original investment by average annual cash flows this formula you can apply in case of even cash flows so what do you mean by even cash flows and when any investment proposal is giving you similar return similar cash flows every year then we call it as even cash flows or annuity so in this example original investment is 50000 rupees and every year this machinery is giving you 25000 rupees every year that's how that's why 50000 divided by 25000 it is 2 years and this payback period we will denote in terms of years now let us consider another small example the cost of a project proposal is say 1 lakh rupees and the life of the project is 4 years 1 2 3 4 and this project is generating cash flows of say for example 25,000 again 25,000 50,000 in third year and 20,000 in last year that is fourth year in this case also we have to find out cumulative cash flows to determine payback period so life is four years we are investing one lakh on this project proposal and it is generating 25,000 25,000 50,000 and 20,000 rupees in first second third and fourth years respectively now find out cumulative cash flows first year 25,000 second year by the end of second year total amount generated out of this project proposal is 50,000 and third year 1 lakh and by fourth year a total amount of 1 lakh 20,000 rupees is generated on this project but the original cost of investment is 1 lakh so that 1 lakh we are realizing by the end of third year hence payback period is 3 years in this case now what is the difference between previous question and this question a slight difference that is in this case the cash flows are even in nature whereas in this case uneven in nature that means every year we are not receiving similar cash flows one more small example let us consider 
Example number three. Cost of project or cost of machinery is say rupees again I'm taking one lakh rupees and five years is the duration of the project or expiry five years life of the project and cash flows 25,000 30,000 40,000 20,000 again 20,000 so in this is also a clear case of uneven cash flows now as usual to find out payback period we have to find out first cumulative cash flows 25,000 55,000 95,000 1 lakh 15,000 and 1 lakh 35,000 so 25 55 95 1 lakh 15,000 and 1 lakh 35,000 our investment is 1 lakh when are you realizing this 1 lakh by the end of third year we got only 95,000. By the end of fourth year, we have realized 1,15,000 rupees. That means that it clearly says that our 1 lakh rupees initial cost of investment is realized in between third and fourth years. So in such a case, we have to employ a simple formula to determine payback period. That is, payback period is equal to so this is base year right third year we got 95,000 rupees here and the remaining 5,000 rupees that is the difference between cost of investment and the amount realized by the end of third year that 5,000 rupees is realized in between third and fourth year hence you have to take this as base year so 3 is our base year plus the unrealized amount you are expecting 1 lakh by the end of third year we got only 95,000 the difference between these two is 5,000 rupees divided by cash flows next to base year so cash flows next to base year that is our third year is 20,000 rupees. So 3 plus 5,000 divided by 20,000 it means 5 ones are 5 fours are 1 by 4 means 0 0.25. So 3.25 years. So I am writing here that formula base year plus unrealized amount by the end of base year divided by cash flows next to base year so using this formula we can find out payback period now if you observe these three questions, it's very, very easy to find out payback period. So very easy and easy to understand. But this payback period suffers from some limitations or demerits what are the demerits if you observe in this case or first or second any problem we are considering only cash flows up to this base year 
in determining whether this project proposal is worth for your investment or not we are ignoring cash flows next to base year so ignoring cash flows next to or after base year we are not considering them in the process of our decision making or evaluation of project proposals this is one limitation and the second limitation is the objective of any company any organization is shareholders wealth maximization it is no way concerned for example uh, the share prices of any companies they definitely they are not dependent on payback period of the project proposals which a company takes so it is not consistent not consistent with the objectives of any organization that is shareholders wealth maximization not only these two it suffers from a very important serious drawback that is it completely ignores time value of money so these are the drawbacks and advantages of this method so payback period is a very simple method very understanding method easily you can understand this and worldwide this is employed worldwide but it suffers from these three important demerits that is it ignores cash flows after base year we are not considering them in our decision making and it is not consistent with the very important objective of any company that is maximizing eps of company and it is not consistent with that objective hence this is second li uh, limitation and last one it ignores time value of money with this so this is a brief brief introduction to the first method of capital budgeting that is payback period method hope you understand the entire concept if you have any queries you can mail me uh, i will uh, uh, solve your queries i will address your queries don't forget to like share and subscribe my video all the best mm -hmm.